What's up guys, Double Rex here, back with another video. Today we react to another major kill video. Uh, what made me, we, we know uh, just how powerful is the yeah. Emperor of Mankind really, uh, man, of Mankind really is. Mm -hmm. So what made me, you know, man, shoot the video is, uh, we watched the other video yesterday talking about the Emperor and uh, Lord Warhammer. Yeah. I was like, yeah, how powerful it is because they were talking about he and his God process yeah. and stuff. So it wanted to make, I wanted to yeah, see, I like, just, and we just never knew how, like, yeah, we well, knew he's powerful, but yeah, we don't want to see, like, yeah, how powerful it really is. So, guys, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Also, hit that like button, guys. It helps us know that y'all enjoying these videos and, and help our videos get out there to more people. So, uh -huh. like the video, and also hit that share button, guys. Share it with your friends and comment below what other videos you uh, want us to react to. And we see, uh, let's get into the video, guys. The Emperor, regardless if you believe he was a fail-safe created by the Old Ones or the conjoined soul of thousands of shamans, was born pretty bloody powerful. He was a psyker two, before psychers were a thing. Yeah, they the don't know how he was. Yeah. The old ones, yeah. Stopping his own uncle's heart for murdering his father without even having to touch him. Beyond his psycho skills, the Emperor was also a perpetual, an immortal being who more or less cannot be killed. He would never age past his prime and never truly die. Perpetuals also gained other not very explored powers. Some were just like normal dudes, like Alanis Pius, notable more for their strength of will and bravery than actual physical prowess. Other, like Erda, the mother of the Primarchs, were like demigods taken out of Greek mythology, able to turn into a monster that could take on four so greater really demons good. at a time. <laughs> Whilst the Emperor didn't get that silly, he was described as being the greatest of them, greater than even Erda. So off the bat, we can see that he was born into greatness. As the Emperor grew into manhood and his powers matured, uh -huh. he used his wisdom, if you can call it that, to subtly guide mankind. As what? mankind entered the dark age of technology, he actually went into hiding, waiting for the age of strife to occur so mankind would be weakened enough for him to take control. If he tried to take control during mankind's golden age, they genuinely would have been able to overcome him, and if not kill him, then at least lock him away. So hmm, once I didn't know that, I know that, that okay. he waited to... They was weak, so he can rule over. I didn't know that he was. They're that. making it like sound like a bad way. Yeah, a bad it thing. probably is a bad way the way they say making it sound though. Easily the single most powerful human in existence, he wasn't even close to being a god or powerful enough to outmuscle hmm. mankind at its peak. During these few thousand years before the birth of the Imperium, the Emperor got really into his science, most notably biomancy. The ability to edit DNA to create super soldiers was his new hobby. With this knowledge, he created his custodies, who remain to this day the greatest super soldiers mankind has, yep. other than the Primarchs. However, each custody was an unreplicatable work of art. They took a shitload of time, effort, and resources to create. As such, he couldn't mass produce them for his galactic or even global conquest. Hence, he used these skills to create the cheap yet effective Thunder Warriors. Wait, there's like another video where like they show like a like they show like you like know, like a cinematic. Oh, show like, yeah. I don't know. They don't think y'all let us know in the comments. Do they got a cinematic? I don't think they do though. Probably. From there, it was the Primarchs and Space Marines. With the successes that these inventions wrought, it's clear that his initial key powers wasn't his body, but his mind. He needed his armies and legions to fulfill his ambition. There was just no way he could solo take the galaxy. Even the creation of the Primarchs and the Astartes wasn't entirely him. Erda did half the work for the Primarchs, while some scientist bitch, and she was a bitch, I'm not just being sexist, yeah, yeah. did a lot of heavy lifting for the but, Space uh, Marines. Not yet because of that own part, yeah, because you know he couldn't make them Space Marines because they, they all got to get physical traits yeah. that got to be made, yeah. The Emperor had limits to his knowledge. He wasn't all-knowing, all-seeing, or omnipresent. If he mm. was, the galaxy probably wouldn't be such a shithole right now. <laughs> I know, right? In saying that, he could see the future in great detail. However, he described it as being able to see the destination, but not the infinite paths that could lead there. Also, as it no, has been established in 40k, no, the he future is a fickle path. But he see the destination, so he saw the destination. He see where it go end it, but he yeah. don't see that. So he probably see him in that sure, no, right? So. Thing. Random shit occurs all the time that throws all farcing and prophecy into the trash. After all, nobody foresaw Gilliman's resurrection, and it actually gave Titsnitch a massive headache. Despite that, future seeing does come in clutch, and was another of the Emperor's key powers. He wasn't the best at it, but he was better than most. The thing about the Emperor is that he is never satisfied. There is always more power, more knowledge to gain. Oh, His hubris powerful. was so much that any source of power wasn't off limits. He believed he could conquer it all, even the darkest of power, and to be fair, he kind of could. On yeah. Maloch, it seemed as if he bargained with the Chaos Gods or the Warp itself to get a power boost, as well as the knowledge and power required to create the Primarchs. 
He then was somehow able to trick or outmuscle the denizens of the warp without having to uphold his end of the bargain. Well, at least not until the Horus Heresy. This new power hit him harder than a mega dose of TRT to the scrotum. With this boost of his psychic might, the Emperor was able to make an entire legion of marines kneel before him unconsensionally, summon forth the souls of thousands of dead Astartes as well as their Primarch to fight for him, and he could unleash holy fire that could burn millions of demons instantly. Oh, he also crap. had the rare and scary ability to obliterate a soul, doing so on a number of occasions, but most famously to Horus. He could choose what people saw him as. Even Primarch struggled to see past his illusions. He could increase his size dramatically by combining his biomancy with his psychic powers. I mean, just look how fucking big he is here. It's insane. Yeah. He is one of the two psychers in the galaxy that can ignore and overcome the pariah gene blanks, something that even Magnus can't do. The other example for those interested is the Grey Knight Hyperion. Any soldiers under his command become unbreakable, A because they are so full of awe to be in the presence of their emperor and B oh, because his psychic it. aura fills them with courage. To add even more sugar to the spice, the emperor did all this shit while still powering the Astronomicon from half a galaxy away. So what about it's his crazy. physical strength and speed? Well, funnily enough, without his psychic might, the Emperor is more or less a normal dude. Whenever he isn't flexing or in battle, his true resting form is an average man of average build and height. That's so you can argue that his physical like power is actually his psychic power. But for the sake of not making this video Alpha Legion levels of confusing, that's crazy though. No, like, if you see it from right there, like he like a uh, human shaped form, but just in a big suit. That's crazy, I didn't even know that though right there, bro. He just, had, when he rested, he's just like, oh, that's crazy. Let's just keep the two separate. He is strong as hell, easily stronger than his sons. During his first meeting with Russ, the Emperor lost an eating and drinking contest to the Wolf King. It's unclear if Lehman was just genuinely such an alcoholic that he was able to win, or if the biggie let him. But regardless, the Emperor ended up punching Lehman in the face, knocking him out in a single hit. To be fair, the Emperor was wearing his power armor, but how much was him and how much was his armor isn't known. But if a space marine in power armor punched a Primarch, he'd probably break his hand. When the Emperor and Vulcan competed in a test of strength and endurance, both unarmored, they were evenly matched. Matched. However, hmm. the Emperor was able to kill and carry a larger salamander for their final competition. It also seems like the Emperor deliberately matched Vulcan in the previous challenges and through the final challenge so that Vulcan would swear loyalty to him. With Vulcan being one of, if not the strongest Primarch, this shows that the Emperor is above them all in strength. His swordsman skills would be excellent, but it's hard to know as they were barely tested. He fought more like an anime protagonist than a swordsman, as he would sweep through a battlefield, slaughtering the enemy in their hundreds. The Emperor did once get grabbed by an especially massive orc. The orc seemed poised to kill the Emperor before Horus saved him, but once again, it's hard to know if this was the Emperor being genuinely taken off guard or a ploy to make Horus think he had just saved his father. What about his durability? Well, it is quite rare that the Emperor's durability gets tested, but holy shit, it certainly has been. During his quick yeah. duel with Drachnion, the Still Mega Demon now, impaled the Emperor on a pronged spear and hoisted him into the air. This hurt the Emperor, drew blood, and would have ruptured organs. However, after a minute of, oh fuck, that hurt, he was back in action. His fight with Horus was even more devastating, losing an arm, an eye, and his throat. Despite this, he was still alive enough to get to the Golden Throne and keep the galaxy glued together for the next 10,000 years. His durability stems from his perpetual status more than anything. Psychers die just like normal people if shot or stabbed, so it probably wasn't his psycho prowess keeping him alive just these immortality hacks that he was born with. Perpetuals aren't actually totally invulnerable, just mega hard to kill. If you stab a perpetual with a crystallized shard of the Emperor's psychic might, it can kill them, like with what happened to Vulcan, except he survived, but that's beside the point. There are alternate futures where the Emperor does receive true death if an enemy is able to fight their way to his golden throne, but this hasn't been tested in the main timeline, so who knows? It is actually a point of debate within the 40K universe, as well as its fandom, as to what would happen if someone killed the Emperor while he was on his golden throne? Would he regenerate back to full health? Would he stay dead and doom the Imperium to perpetual darkness and doom? Speaking of Throne Emperor, let's talk about Throne Emperor. Since becoming a deified battery, the Emperor's power has changed. He is immobile and struggles to pull his fractured consciousness together. Despite this, he is obscenely powerful able to fart out warp storms, keep all four Chaos Gods at bay, power the Astronomicon, i.e. a massive warp beacon that can be seen by the entire galaxy. So you can say he warp power for now, but he be wise. thinking all day like, dang, I was once like a great I know, right, because he's still conscious, right? So it gotta be like... He probably don't, his mind probably don't like work the same way it used yeah, to work, though. 
turn some of his followers into angelic superheroes. The funny part is that most of his feats of power are done by accident, more so someone tapping into his power rather than him deliberately focusing okay. on them. When Gilliman woke up after 10,000 years of near-death stasis, fuck me, his back would have been sore, and met with the Emperor, he said that the Emperor was like a celestial entity, no longer human but significantly more powerful than he had been living as a man. After all, the biggie gets countless sextillions of prayers every day and has been consuming 1,000 suckers a day for 10,000 years. I know, right? The dude is juiced as fuck, definitely not a natty anymore. With the opening of the Great Rift, the galaxy has been flooded with psychic energy, empowering the Emperor further and even allowing him to bring his consciousness together a lot easier, meaning Chaos has inadvertently given the Emperor the power he needs to achieve a total victory, potentially. Good work, Abaddon. But whilst his psychic might has gone off the charts, his strength, speed and literally anything else has gone down the bin. For the Emperor to merely communicate in most situations, he has to send fragmented cryptic dreams to a select few custodies who then have to have a number of meetings to try piece together whatever the fuck their dad is trying to tell them. <laughs> so if we were to go Dragon Ball Z mode and put a power level comparison, the current throne Emperor has a higher power level. However, the flesh and blood Emperor of the Great Crusade was able to use his full power effectively yeah. Here's a good example. When Horus was wounded with a Chaos Knife and Ferris was decapitated by Fulgrim, the Flesh and Blood Emperor wasn't even aware of both events as they occurred and couldn't do shit to prevent them. However, when Gilliman was high-key killed by Mortarion, the Emperor was able to project his power across the galaxy, cure Gilliman, bring him back to life, call Mortarion a bitch, and then set Nurgle on fire. Another example is that when the Flesh and Blood Emperor was confined to the Golden Throne after Magnus did something very wrong, 95% of his focus I was on- I see that because he, like right now on the throne, he connected to everywhere, yeah. everything right the now. Throne. Yeah, he didn't want to talk about him on the throne though. Yes, he was. He said on the throne, you, mm. when, he, when Gilliman died, he I thought he was had about enough power to on the throne. No, no, no. He couldn't do shit with the war and could only communicate yes, with the select few custodians. Oh, now in his corpse form, he's dealing with the same, if not worse, issues as he was when he was alive. However, now he interacts with the galaxy, creating living saints and shit. So overall, the Emperor is powerful as holy hell, easily the most powerful entity in real space when he was out of his wheelchair, and maybe even the war post his uh, ascension. The issue is that he struggles to coordinate his power or access all of it at the same time, due to how fragmented his soul currently is. Invoking the Emperor's name is enough to cause demons pain. The Chaos oh. Gods are very wary of him. He made some Elder Harlequins reconsider if they truly were superior to humans, and the Orcs admire him as a legendary God of War. I don't think I really need to go on. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, the Patreon is the place. Uh, I want to I wanna know if he says to God why he can't heal himself. I think he was so injured during that fight that he couldn't. It's past. It was like past syllable, bro. I want to know if they ever gonna make him come back, like to human form. I don't know. Y'all let us know in the comments. They said they make like show up, like that new. They trying to make that Warhammer show. Yeah, stuff, so. yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe. So let us know, guys, in the comments below. Uh, what y'all thoughts on the video? Also, hit that subscribe button, guys, if you're new. Also, hit the like button, guys, helps us know that y'all enjoy videos like this. Uh huh. And also hit that share button, guys. Recommend to your friends. To, uh, also, follow our Twitter, at Reacts. Uh, it's going to be in the description below. And also, uh, see you guys in the next video.